Is that a breakup? That a breakup? I think we have a situation right here. Yo, what's happening? How are you? You must be feeling excited and buzzing for this. Or if you're not, I'm just about to make you super excited. Excited just to be with you and talk to you? Oh, yeah. Is that what you tell? <laughs> I feel like that's something that's like an old fucking pickup line you told. Are you you must be buzzing and so excited to be in the presence of me, Tinto, oh, yeah. your hero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm like sliding off my seat so excited. <laughs> How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Welcome to the Feeling Station. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. How are you feeling? I'm good. You know what? I'm actually so good. I've had one yeah. of those weeks that it was a little crazy, but yeah. then I just had a very solid, good end to the week, and I've had a nice weekend and yeah. gotten some stuff done that I needed to get done, and I'm, yeah, I'm feeling good. And now we're sitting down and we're about to talk about something interesting that's happened in your life before. Exactly. Get into some feelings. I'm really looking forward to this. So am I. Yeah. I think I, in good. fact, I need. I actually need to start by saying thank you because the way that we connected was, was kind of unconventional. So, I, I mean, sometimes I do get messages that come through the DM to say, you know, I'd like to do something. And then I spoke to you over the phone and we ended up having some form of other mini podcast that that yeah. that that came to life. Yeah, seriously. So, you know, so more than just uh, the breakup story you're going to talk about today, I'm looking forward to us doing some more work in the future. 100 percent. Yeah, I just fingers, I fingers crossed completely just like compelled to reach out and do this. Yeah. So I, you're you're the lucky one here. I don't often slide into a man's <laughs> DMs. I get a lot sliding into mine, but I'm like, yep. no, show me your bank account, not your dick pic. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking hilarious <laughs> But now I love this Thank you so much for connecting Yeah, no awesome. And um, and for those listening to the podcast for the first time It touches on breakup stories that people would like to talk about With a view to give you lessons from my guest's experience And one of the reasons why the podcast is doing really well um, Is that I do my best to keep my guests anonymous Which brings me to the fun bit, right? The part where I give you the name that you're going to use for the duration of this episode Amazing. So I've headed over to the beautiful sunny country of Zambia in Southern Africa. Your name is in a language called Tonga. And you better have a pen and paper ready for it. I'm this. writing it down. I'm going to write are? it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So your go. name is Lushomo. Right. Oh. It's literally just three syllables. Lu Sho Mo. And that is L yeah, L U S H O. M O Lushomo. I, I spelt it right on the first try. Oh, you did? Yeah, I know. You see, but what you find with Southern African names, that's that's the thing. You know, so so my name is Tendai. You literally spell it as it is said. Yeah. You know, and, and same for, for words like Lushomo and you, you've got Luyando. I'm sure just by the way I've said it, you can actually guess the spelling. Yeah, exactly. All that. Right. And your name Lushomo means faith and hope. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So how relatable are the concepts of faith and hope to your to your story? Who of the two lost hope in the relationship and faith in the relationship? Me. Me, for sure. Ooh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But then I think it's I really, I do think it's a bit of a story of like finding hope and faith back in myself. I Ooh, think nice. is what it is. So I think it is like I lost it. Or maybe I'd never really had it to begin with. That's sort of yeah, what yeah. I'm going to get into. I, I feel a little bit like this relationship was doomed from the beginning like before it started Whoa. which is a bit fucked up and kind of heavy but I, I sort of feel like that so i sort of feel like i found that faith and hope in myself as nice. i went through this relationship or even as i've gotten out of it since nice i really like where this is going so it's relatable another yeah. one in the bag you know so so far i've only had two names that i've given guests that were completely unrelatable to the situations <laughs> and i felt like shit so yes no, i still have confidence in the process Lushamo. i love that it's so pretty yeah so really like what that. what name are you giving the guy that you're going to talk about today okay so i'm going to go a little bit unconventional here i'm going to use Ooh. a zim name but a zim Ooh. surname okay we're going to go with chamisa <laughs> because, what? <laughs> because, as Yo. most people know, so yeah. right, he was running for president in 2018. He yes. was a good guy. <laughs> Everyone was rooting for him. He's cute. Oh but in the gosh. end, just couldn't pull out the W. Like, he just couldn't fucking. This is. 
go across the line and take the win and just became a loser in the end. Oh my God, this is just freaking amazing. So he will be Chamisa for this podcast. Oh, wow. People are going to go absolute nuts <laughs> <laughs> about this. I must say, though, I got to give you credit for your incredible research skills. You know, for you to be able to pull off such a meaning and interpret it in this way and use it on the podcast is nothing short of amazing. You are a genius, my friend. Fucking say it again. (laughs) Write it home. Tell my mom that. (laughs) Okay, so the story is about Lushomo and Chamisa. Chamisa and Lushomo, yeah. Right? Okay, now, um, the other reason why the podcast is doing great is that I get some real-life lessons from my guest stories. So, have you got a couple of lessons for me to share? I do. So, and I know I've I've heard this one before on the podcast, Mm -hmm. but it is... Sure, like just you have to trust your gut. And I sort of alluded to like it was over before it began, but like you do have to trust your gut. And I think the other thing and the biggest thing that I've taken away from this and anything is you have to love yourself first, period. Mm -hmm. That's just it doesn't matter how much love somebody else is willing to give you. If you don't have that for yourself, you'll never really be able to feel it or live it or really experience that kind of love, I don't think. I guess it's near impossible to give what you don't have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was a lesson learned. Okay, so so do you have more, or it's just those two that you want to keep, and those, possibly some might creep out of the woodwork. Yeah, the I'm sure there's more. You know, yeah, you know, I'm sure there's more that'll come out, but those are sort of two two big ones that came out for me. Cool. So first up, I got trust your gut. This is a universal theme. You yeah. know, I, I I I still need to learn how to do that myself. And number two is love yourself first. You know, ideally, because if you don't have love within yourself, then how do you give what you don't have? Exactly. So let's go straight into it. So Lushomo and Chamisa, where did you guys meet? We and, met. And how did you guys connect? Yeah. Well, I sort of think a little bit of the background before I get into that and like yeah. where we met. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to have a little bit of like background on me. So I grew up always like a bigger girl, never really had like boyfriends and stuff in high school. Um, and then when I started dating and stuff in my 20s, and I went ape shit wild like i was like party girl all the fuck boys give them to me i was like red flags red is my favorite color fucking bring it on like i well why was that though why was that just zero self-esteem right and no worth in myself so i was like i don't deserve actual someone who like actually cares about me or treats me well whatever i'll be the one who gets fucked but not dated or the one who's like the dirty secret or whatever right and i just never thought i deserved more so that's sort of Mm -hmm. the background of that and and right before we had started dating like the last guy i actually so we met on do you remember plenty of fish it was plenty oh yeah but yeah yeah, we we used to call it pof yeah pof (laughs) yeah you gotta meet on pop okay yeah yeah. so terrible right and uh i was actually started talking to him and some other dude at the exact same time and he Chamisa seemed a little bit <laughs> so fucking I love that name. Um, <laughs> Chamisa seemed a bit like eh, like a little bit boring for me. And the other guy was like, "Ooh, yeah, he's a bit of yeah, a firecracker. Yeah. I'm into this. Yeah, and so yeah. I went for him and he ended up being a complete fuck boy. Totally ghosted me like absolute asshole. And wow. then I, and then this guy was still there. So he's still mm-hmm. sort of hanging on, still hanging around like, you know, a month or two later. And I even was like every time we'd made a date for like our first date. I'd been like, oh, I'm too hungover. I can't. I'm too whatever. I can't. I bailed on him for like a month and he was still there. And I was like, okay, this guy's Jeez. still sticking around. Yeah. Um, you know, bit of a pussy, but let me give him a shot. Let me give him a shot because he seems but, completely but, opposite. But but here's a question for, for, for you right from the onset. Yeah. The fact that he hung around for so long, do you think perhaps he, he also felt he didn't have a chance generally with with people so he would stick around as long as he could because Maybe. because i mean sticking around for a month for somebody who's clearly showing you that hey i'm not really into you is is kind of telling for him a hundred percent i think it is super telling yeah, yeah. no it, it really is and i think he did tell me when we were dating that he liked the chase he liked how unavailable i was at the beginning oh right I was okay always busy always doing stuff yeah, always yeah. out with friends and he liked that, right? It wasn't, like, available. And I was like, yeah, because mm-hmm. I was, like, fucking other guys. That's why I wasn't available, so. What is it about him that you didn't like anyway? You know, It, it wasn't. It, it was just a general, you know how you just vibe with somebody? And even yeah, when yeah. you're chatting with them and it's, like, 
There's just a vibe. And it wasn't that I didn't like him. It was that he was the opposite of everything I had ever dated before. He was quiet, shy, mm. low key, not tons of friends, kind of stuck to himself. Okay. Just a very quiet, reserved dude. Yeah. Where I always yeah. look for like life of the party kind of guys. Like all the guys were like, you want to be mates with them. And they're the fucking, they're so fun to be with. They're usually yeah. assholes. Yeah. But yeah. they're, like, so fun to be with. And I usually went for that character. So I was like, why don't I... Maybe I just do need to go for the complete, complete opposite. Opposite. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Okay. So you so, guys started going out on dates and stuff? Started going on dates. And mm. and it was good. I decided, you know what? I'm going to... He's a nice boy. I'm going to take it slow for the first time. Like, I'm just going to ease into it. He's so respectful. Super nice. And then we... So we were dating for maybe a month before we had sex. We had sex for the first time at his place. And afterwards, I was like, no, I'm not into oh. this guy. Like, I should not be dating this guy. Oh. Yeah. So I made him. This is fucking cold. I made him drive me home, like, right after we had sex. And he actually got a speeding ticket on the way home. No yeah. freaking way. You got to be joking. <laughs> I know. So I, I, I mean, I did feel awful. And I was just like, it just wasn't, it wasn't like the sex was bad. It just wasn't like. I just felt like something was missing. And then the sex just sort of, for me, like confirmed, like we just weren't right. Like there was something that, that, that we just weren't right. That was going to be my question to say, yo, was the sex so bad? No, it wasn't even. You asked to be taken home as no. soon as it was done. No, it no. wasn't even. Because I've dated guys who have like jackrabbited me and been awful in bed. Jackrabbit. <laughs> Like, I swear, like, they just want to, like, hit the headboard like a metronome, just like. Wow. Um, but, and I've even dated them because I'm like, well, they're hot and whatever, right? Because I've always, like, I wanted to, like, sort of, like, punch up and be yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so it wasn't even, but it was just something where I was like, this just is not feeling right to me. And then I had this, like, who am I who I'm, like, this bigger girl, like, you know, I, I, I'm i not fucking all that. So who am I to then not be with this guy who wants to be with me? How can I be this picky? How do I have the right to do this? Which is actually so fucked up thinking that yeah, like. Very. You know, like you don't even have the choice to be picky in your own love life because you don't wouldn't deserve someone who you really felt good about. Like you should take what you can get because of who you are and where you're at. And so you that's know, why my background, I think, is important. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued about the speeding ticket when he was taking you back. Did you, did you make him feel some sense of urgency to get you home? No, he got what? it Be, because because <laughs> that, that don't make no sense. He got it on the way from my when he dropped me off on the way from my house back to his. Oh, back to his. So I guess oh he was speeding goodness. home, being like that. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Whatever. Yeah, you know what just happened. I, I mean, did he ask you? Was he like, oh, I mean, like, did you not enjoy that or something? Because I'm I'm just speaking from a guy's perspective. Yeah, here, yeah, yeah. Right? I can imagine having sex with someone. And as soon as we finish, the first thing she says is, okay, I want to go home. I'll be saying to myself, oh, shit. You yeah. know, but what happened? And I would ask, you know, but like, are you okay? What's wrong? Did he ask you those kind of questions? Yeah, yeah. And was I was like, it, yeah, what? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm like, it's all. I'm just like, I just need to be in my own bed. Like, I just, I just had like a freak out. And then I told him after that I just sort of had like this freak out. So for like a couple Whoa. of days, we we didn't talk. And then we had this big conversation and we ended up meeting up. And I was just like, look, I think I'm just like really freaked out because it's the first time really ever that I've been in like somewhat of like what would look like a healthy relationship, relationship and yeah. someone like wanting to be with me and proud to be with me and all that. And I just was like, I just didn't know how to react. And maybe part of that was true. Um, and so I just said, like, I freaked out, but I want to give it another go. And he was like, absolutely. And then we decided right then we were going to be boyfriend and girlfriend. He's like, I want to be your boyfriend. Like, I want to be with you. And I was like, yes, I want to be your girlfriend. Like, I want that. So let's let's go. So after the panic attack and well, not really a panic attack, but, you know, after the yo, you know, yeah. I want to go home quick. Uh, he gets his ticket. Then you have the a discussion and you decide you're going to become boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. So were you hoping that the boyfriend and girlfriend situation would make you feel better about what you already knew, which was that you're not really into this guy? Yeah. Did you, felt I think, you, did, did you feel you're not trying enough? I think I just want, I wanted to play the role of somebody's girlfriend, I think, more than I wanted to be his girlfriend, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, yeah. And I think I just, like, all my friends were in relationships, and I just wanted that. Like, I wanted to fucking 
be on Instagram and have all these pictures of like, oh, we're so in love, you fucking single yeah. losers out there. I hope you're jealous. Yeah, yeah. Like, and like, just be that, right? But I had all of these worries in the back of my head about like, about him and and our like whether or not our values were really like even aligned with things. Um, so one of the big things with him that I was very concerned about was that he had jumped from relationship to relationship for his whole adult life. Like he'd be with a girl for like two years and then four or six months later, he's in a four year relationship. And then four or six months later, he's in a two year relationship. So I had met him after like a four year relationship or two year, I forget, but like six months within six months after he's ready to go back in. He was one of those people. And I was like, so I never really trusted as well. Like you're saying all this stuff to me. You're saying all the right, but is this like, is it me or am I, is it because I'm a, a warm female body standing in front of you? Like, are you, is this for, you know, is this for me or is this for anyone? Like, is this Lushima or is this just, I could be any fucking chick. And so I just had this like trust with that. And like, that I could never really get by and, but I just wanted it so bad. And so I was going like, you know, I have a really good relationship with my family. Family is a big, important thing to me. That's why I've always Mm -hmm. gravitated towards men who have big families or come from big families or like really have a lot of respect for their families. Right. And go, cause I have friends who are like, I'll be like, Oh, I have to do this. Or I need to kind of like, even now I'll like check with my family on stuff. I feel weird if I don't check with my family on stuff. Really? And, and they're like, why? Like, tell your, tell your family to fuck off. And I was like, okay, you tell my family to fuck <laughs> off. you never met them, but okay. Yeah. And yeah, like, you just, yeah. so he had this really weird relationship with them, like very strained, very bad no long-term friends either. His longest friend mm. had only been for a couple of years. And I'm like, I don't know that to me, that's just screams. Like, why do you not have long-term? I have really long friendships and I work really hard and it's not always easy to maintain people in your life. But like when you don't have those people in your life, like what, what is it? Cause when, is yeah. it when shit gets hard or they're calling you out on stuff when they get to know yeah, you well yeah. enough, you pull out. Cause that's what it sort of felt like. And I sort of witnessed at the beginning of our relationship, he was friends with this girl um, who was a bitch, but that's another story. But like, <laughs> <laughs> you're and, very quick to call her out. Did, did she have a part to play in what happened with you? No, 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 not at all. No? She, was okay, just, cool. she was just annoying. Um, yeah. and, and she actually was calling him out on stuff and was like, you know, you need to do this or work harder on yourself, whatever. And, and in hindsight, like absolutely everything she was saying was accurate. And then he'd be like, I'm not, I'm not hanging out with her anymore. Like she's just, she's calling me out for all this stuff. Like, that's not what I want. I want a friend to like, be cool with and just chill. But I'm like, okay. Yeah, but that's not real. Like, he didn't like being uncomfortable in his situation with things. He's not, no. he's, he's not confrontational. Was he? Not was he? at all. Like would just close up, not talk, yeah. run away, like not do it. And and that was like with everything though, but like wouldn't even want to confront anything. Like didn't even have any really big goals or big dreams. He was just content to be content. Mm-hmm. You know, like that was okay. just, yeah, that was who he was. So, 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 so that's a lot of background on both you and him. Yeah. And, and now, and now I've got to the point where you guys decided you're going to become boyfriend and girlfriend. Who, who yeah. made that call? Was it you or him? I don't know. And I'm pretty sure I was drunk when I did it, but <laughs> <laughs> I, all I remember is that like we met, we had this big conversation. We met up at this party my friend was having. And yeah. then we were just, I, we just sort of decided like, I want to be with you. And he's like, I want to be your boyfriend. I'm like, I want to be your girlfriend. And then at the party, everyone was like, you guys were so gross. You just kept calling each other wow. boyfriend and girlfriend. I'm like all over each other. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are officially an item then. Yeah. Officially, officially. And in my head, I was like, okay, done and dusted. Like we are, we are together period. The end. That's it. And I, and mm-hmm. I loved it. Like I love playing that role. I was like, yes, we're on Instagram. We're hosting couples, dinner parties. We're going like, I was awful looking back oh i would have slapped myself across the face really? like just so annoying of like two years and counting happy anniversary <laughs> to the love of my wow. life like do you know if, if, so so you, you guys actually got to two years we got to four years almost you got to four. just just shy of four years yeah now for someone who from day one you felt uh you know i'm not really into that's a really long time yeah so what did you enjoy within those four years? Let's start there. Yeah. What did you enjoy with him? I, I, he was like the constant support, just always supportive of me and whatever I wanted. It was like, I, I wanted to move across the country. He's like, yeah, let's do it. He moved across the country with me. I wanted us to move in together. He's like, yeah, let's do it. I wanted us. I'm like, let's get a pet. He's like, yeah, let's do it. 
So it was everything that I wanted, he went along for. Anything I wanted, he did. He was like unwaveringly supportive of me. I've never really wanted kids. And I was like, you know, if I ever did have kids, I might adopt them when I'm like older. And he was like, I'm down with that. I don't need kids. Like we could do that. I'd be the stay at home dad. Cause I'm like, I've always said, and I've always kind of joked that like, I'd be a parent if I could be a dad, but like no fucking way could I be a mother. Like it's too hard. It's too, that's too much work. So he's like, he was just there. He cooked for me all the time. He, you know, pick my friends and I would go out and get, you know, pissed up at a bar. And then he would come and pick us up, wasted and drive us through McDonald's and like, like, and just be like our designated driver. And he'd give me gifts. He'd buy me Tiffany's. He told me he loved me every day. Like it is hard to. Jeez. This, this guy's doing a lot of the good stuff, but almost. A lot too good right um yeah i i was having a conversation with a couple of my friends a few weeks ago and i was just trying to understand why it is that a lot of good girls just love really bad boys you know boys who break their hearts constantly they gravitate to that sort of thing and once they meet up with the guy who does everything you described yeah they find it boring they don't want any of it now that makes no sense so this guy is is clearly a yes man because yeah Everything you're saying, he says yes to. Yeah. Did that become boring at some point for you? See, I think the th- I think there's a difference. So I think ni- people have this like, oh, nice guys finish last. But I don't think yeah. that's it. I think if he was sort of more, he had his own voice. I wanted him to step up a bit more. Like I needed him to, I there's this saying that's called like keep up or be dragged. And I felt like I was yeah. dragging him through our whole relationship, everything, yeah. right? And I needed him to have his own goals. I'm a tennis player. I don't know if you play tennis, but I love tennis. And I hate playing against people who are worse than me. I love playing against tennis players who are way, way better than me because they make me a better tennis player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to be in a relationship with somebody who makes me better and pushes me and challenges me. But someone who's just a yes man. Like, as much as I wanted the Stedman to my Oprah, like, I love that sort of idea. Yeah. It was... it. It wasn't even that it was boring. It was just that there was no other side to it. It was just the yes, man. It was so focused. I felt like on me and my happiness, which is so insane as well to say, but like it, I wanted him to go after stuff for his own. Cause like ambitious men and who are driven and want stuff for their own. That's sexy, right? That is someone who's like that. That's a sexy quality. It, it's a very sexy quality, but you are in this for four solid years of goodness, kindness, you know, know, pulling someone instead of being pushed. You could have pulled the plug. You could have pulled the plug a whole lot sooner. I I know, so, and it was just me being like, "Will I ever find someone to love me like this? Will I ever be good enough to love me like this?" And I was sort of like, "He's obviously damaged in some way, but I'm no prize either." And so, I don't deserve someone who's not a bit damaged and doesn't have these issues. And that's sort of how I felt. But he was like, it would just, it got to the, like, even like my friend, when we moved across the country, my friend got him his job, right? I'm like, I got my friend to give him a job at his company and he hated it, hated it the whole time. Complained Mm. about it, hated it, like hated going in. I kid you not, he still works there to this day. You're but that's the kind of person he is, right? He's never going to change to the point where like, even I got frustrated with it. So I was like, let me work on your resume. He was looking at school programs. I'm like, great. Let's look at university programs. At one point I was like applying to jobs for him on LinkedIn with his wow. resume. Like how fucked is that? And I was like, talk about, yeah. talk about zero drive, zero. Like, z- zero, zero drive. Yeah. And it would just go over into like, I would, he'd have uh, two days off, but in the week. So our schedules were like, I had weekends off. He had two, two days off in the middle of the week. And I would go for work. And over those two days, he'd not even get out of his pajamas, wouldn't shower, dishes in the sink, just like doing that. I'm like, yo, you were cock blocking yourself so hard. I don't think men realize these are facts. I do not think men realize how close they are to getting laid all the time. And they cock block themselves. You only have yourselves to blame. I'm telling you. We come really? home. We come home. There's dishes in the sink. You think I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, baby. Let me suck your dick. Like, no. Oh, my gosh. I, wow. Little things. If I came home, yeah. dishes were done. He was showered. Yeah. He smelled good. I was like, damn. Yeah, I get down. Like, absolutely. Wow. 
But it's, that's the thing. You guys cockblock yourselves all the time with the dumb shit you say. And like, Jen. happens all the time. My friends and I even talk about it like at brunch. We'll be like, oh, I went out with this guy last night. But then he fucking, he said this stupid thing. And I was like, what a waste of makeup and ha- getting my hair done. Like I was, because we're like, we shaved our whole fucking body. I'm like a slippery dolphin right now. I just want to, we shaved our whole body. And you had to say something so dumb that we were like, fuck, well, now I can't reward him with sex because he was an asshole. That's how we feel. I'm telling you, you have no idea. Oh, man. Do do you know I'm I'm laughing so hard because the (laughs) the number of times I'm told to do the dishes, right? Dude, that is lube for your woman. That is lube. Just think. That is fucking foreplay starts at the kitchen Oh, sink. my God. So so doing dishes is lube. <laughs> I am oh, telling you. And, and, it, it oh, comes off geez. like, because when women come home, oh, right, all is... they see is like all the shit they have to do. And they go, oh, fuck. Right. I need to clean. I need to do this. It's all in our mind. Oh. If you come home and everything's all done. Bam. Yeah. See, Throw on this, some Sade. Let's get going. You see, this is this is such a debate that we have. We have all the time. A friend of mine visited from uh, another city a couple of weeks ago and we were just sat outside. And, we, you know, as men, we talk about our frustrations and, and, and we both spoke about the same frustration. Yeah. You know, that we are constantly being told to do dishes, which we don't mind doing. <laughs> right. Except that the issue is we like to do it in our time. Oh, right. Fuck so, off. It, oh no, 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 honestly, honestly, that that is the truth. Well, at least in my case, well, in our case, the, the two of okay. us. When, you know, if, if if we wake up in the morning at say ten o'clock, yeah, and we were thinking of doing the dishes at eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the missus happens to wake up half an hour early, right, and sees that they're not done and she whinges, we're already like, ah, okay, you you know, you've just blown my own plan to surprise you. You know, and get the lube sorted as you call to it. To surprise you with right? doing my dishes. Yeah, exactly. What a you know, in, 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 in our time. Yeah. But do you see, guys, if there's any men listening to this, there is no winning to this. Okay, okay. I mean, no, 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 no. Because here's the thing. Just isn't. Here's, here's why she whinges. I'll tell you why she whinges. It's because you were like, I was going to do it at 11, but there's been days where she's gone 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, and they're still not done. Yeah, and maybe so because that then, day I was thinking of doing them at 6 p.m. Okay, but that's like, then you just want to live in a pig pen. <laughs> that's no lube. I'm telling you, men, any yeah. men, I'm telling you guys, if you started doing little things around the house or whatever, it's not even like the big gestures of bringing home flowers. It's also, you got to yeah. learn your partner's love language, right? Yeah, so if their yeah, love yeah. language is like acts of service, doing dishes and taking out the garbage and things like that. That's going to make a big difference. So you do have to learn how your partner receives love and you got to yeah. do it in that way. But I'm telling you, there is lube is in the dishes. I'm telling you. That is jokes. She's really <laughs> going to love all this. I'm telling you. <laughs> So, so what happened to you and uh, Chamisa then? When, when when did you guys start seeing the cracks eventually that got you to the point where like, nah, this needs to end? Yeah. I mean, we sort of started living a bit of separate lives. Like I'd go out on the weekend, I'd be with friends. Um, you know, I would come home and he'd just be doing his thing. And I wasn't like, I was wanting to hang out with friends. I wasn't wanting to do those things with him anymore. We sort of started being like a bit separate. But at the same time, we were talking about getting married we were talking about planning a wedding. Like, I no joke, I was writing a guest list. I had a Pinterest board with like, here's my colors. It's the kind of wait, ring no, I want. But wait, wait a minute. How, yeah. how, how, how does that happen with someone who you clearly feel is not getting you wet in quotes because yeah. they're not doing stuff around the house to, to, yeah. to get you to feel like you want to get in the mood? You feel as a yes man. Yeah. He's not saying no. He's not showing any sense of urgency or ambition or drive to do stuff. Yeah. That would literally be digging your grave deeper. But I just thought like, you know what I'd love? I'd love to put up a big album on Facebook and Instagram of like my wedding. And I'd love to have like my day and the attention and dress up and have that and have somebody be my husband. And literally while we were like, I was like talking about our wedding and we were talking about getting married in my head. I was like, well, you know, we'll probably get divorced in a few years, but I'll deal with that then. Like I was planning a wedding thinking about a divorce, which is. That so is insane. 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 Yeah. I can't even believe that that is where my head was at because I just kept going. I'm lucky to have somebody who loves me this much and is so caring and wonder. He's a truly wonderful man. Like he is a wonderful guy. I think he just wasn't right for me. I think we wanted different things and our values were misaligned. And that's why I don't think he's a bad dude at all, at all. 
And he never did anything okay. to me that made me doubt him or anything. So did you ever say to him, I feel your lack of drive is a turnoff for me? Yeah. So we had those conversations. They blow up, right? They'd start with the dishes in the sink. That's why people are like, hey, we broke up because of the dishes in the sink. Yeah, I'm like, Mate, exactly. You did not Guys. break up because of the dishes in the sink. That was festering <laughs> for fucking two years before then. <laughs> You know, it's like just a little one. You know, when you're having like a really bad day and then someone could just yeah. like bump into you and spill your coffee a little bit and you're like, fuck, it, yeah. my life sucks and I don't yeah. have anything and the, the world's yeah. not fair. But that's what happens in a relationship. Like it builds and builds and builds and builds until this yeah. point. And then all of a sudden he can't decide where to go for dinner. And I'm like, make a fucking decision, man. Yeah. Like take yeah. some ownership over your life and pick if you want fucking sushi or pizza like and it, it's so stupid but even we literally would get in fights like that over where to eat because he just could i was like i make decisions all day i'm the i'm the you know alpha in everything i do i need you to fucking make a one decision pick dinner and i remember one time it was a summer it was a heat wave it was hot as hell like 40 degrees out insane dying and i was like we need to go eat somewhere we we're walking and i was like i don't want to walk aimlessly like i'm i'm it was all hangry and then he's like i don't know i don't know where to pick i don't know where to pick i'm like oh my god this is your problem this is your fucking problem like just pick something and we'll go with it yeah. and then he yeah. chose to go to like hot pot and i'm like motherfucker are you for real what's what's, what's hot pot like it's, what's that it's so it's a chinese it's chinese food where you like boil meat and it's like a really hot soup where you like boil meat and veggies in the huge hot soup that sits in front of you and it's boiling hot in there in a heat wave <laughs> and so i was like okay you know what you and he's like well you Come want me to make a decision Chamisa. No, Come this on, is Chinese why that. my man could wow. not, he couldn't, he couldn't win. And he's like, see, I can't win. But I'm like, at the same time, but like, mate, you fucking no, no. You're like offering a bottle of water to a man who's drowning. Like, yeah, you know, it's not, it's not working yeah. and your, your priorities are wrong. So I think we just started getting, we just started getting distance. And then I was just, I couldn't, and those like fights kept happening, but then I would, he would shut down in fights and he wouldn't want to talk about them. And he gets non-confrontational. And I'm like, let's talk about this in the moment. I'm very much like, let's get it out. Let's fight it out. Let's, you know, do, say what we're going to say to each other. Still be respectful. Yeah. Never call each other names or anything, but like say what we're going to say and then let's move forward. But he couldn't do that. Right. He just stew and stew and all this stuff. And it was just like so weird. And I remember being so unhappy that I was just crying all the time being like, is this my life? Is this what it's going to be? Mm -hmm. And I remember being in bed next to him and he was sleeping and I was like crying in bed next to him and like just wow. so sad. And I was like, I, I don't think I've ever been so lonely in my life. And I was sleeping next to someone who was in love with me and I was so lonely and I felt like I couldn't tell anyone because I was projecting this perfect relationship. I was telling everyone we were great. We were in love. We were going to get married and do all these things but like, we only had sex four times in the last year we were together. Wait a minute. Yeah. That's like once a quarter. Dude. And it was always initiated by me and always when I was drunk. So he didn't want to have sex with you outside he just, of you initiating it? I, yeah, I don't, I don't mean I don't really know where his head was at with then. We weren't talking as much as we should have been about that. And then I'd go out. I'd go to a bar. I'm a flirt. I, I did a couple of times. I never slept with somebody else, but I did make out with other men at the end. What does that mean? Just making out, like literally making out, not like anything else other than just like kissing. Yo. Yeah. I just felt so like not wanted and not, I mean, that's what women want to feel want. Everyone wants to feel wanted and sexy and like their partner wants yeah. them, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a lot going on here. The way, you know, the more that I listen to this. So he's non-confrontational behavior. Yeah. For starters, is is telling. His, his yes man approach and attitude in general yeah. is quite telling. Um, his inability to make a decision and relying on somebody to make that decision for him is also yeah. quite telling. Yeah. So does he come from a relatively small family? Yeah, he comes from a small family, never knew his dad, never knew his mm. dad. His mom kept that a secret, got pregnant. The dad sort of didn't want it or didn't. I think he knew about him, but didn't want him. So he had like a lot of sort of abandonment issues. Issues, yeah. Um, I remember at the beginning learning about all these issues and I was like, okay, this is good. He's a bit fucked up. Okay, I, this is a little bit more interesting to me. Yeah, you see, that was going to be my next question, right? You, 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 you come across and strike me as somebody who's a good judge of character. 
So I would like to think you may have seen some of these things early on and you yeah. know, you could have made the choice to say, nah, this is not really for me. And, and, and you did, you know, just like you said, you saw, okay, he's a bit fucked up, but I yeah. want some of that. But I, What but were you expecting when, when it started manifesting in the way that it was going to manifest anyway, which is poorly? Yeah, I mean, that that is, right? When when something rears its head at the start of a relationship, that's usually what ends it, right? Those big, yeah. big warning signs are always there since the beginning. But but really, so imagine spending your whole life thinking you're not worthy or deserving of love or affection or someone wanting to be with you. And now you have somebody who's there. And yes, they're very flawed and you're not a match, but they're telling you they love you. They want to support you wholeheartedly. He cooked for me. like all. He was a great cook. I, I will say that. He, yeah. he like, he cooks for me all the time. I would, he, I would be hung over. He'd go to work, but in the morning I'd wake up a little note saying like, hope you feel better. There's a bottle of orange juice, a Starbucks, a Vogue magazine, like sitting there ready for me. Like just to, you know, just like he'd do so much stuff for me. So then rap, even it's really hard. So it's hard to yeah. balance out. Cause you know, a relationship is like when there's more bad than good, you got to leave. But what if the good is there's so much good. And the bad is like almost these intangible, like, you know, what our values don't align. And when my mom found out, we went on our break, which was like our breakup. The first thing she said to me is that you will never find a man who will treat you like him or who will love you like he does. This is a huge mistake. Wow. Yeah. So then, so, you know, how am I to do that? Like, how am I to get out of that? Even as, as fucked up or flawed as it was, how do I think I deserve the right to then go, no, I'm going to stand on my own and I'd rather be alone than miserable with somebody and unhappy. And I deserve more than this. I deserve to be like fulfilled and happy, but I, cause I didn't think I did. And yes, I'm a good judge of character or better judge now, but I think then I was so clouded by not loving myself that I couldn't see past that. And, and you felt it was important to show this to the world because the, the number of times you've mentioned social media, yeah. You know, and showing yeah. this to, sh to social media, showing it to the world. Exactly. This really wasn't about you and Chamisa. It was more about the Lushomo and Chamisa love show that has yeah. been broadcast on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and whatever yeah. else there was out there. Yeah. I love, like, so, I loved it. Yeah. And, and, and I also get the impression that you guys were, were potentially broken and quotes in the exact same ways in mm -hmm. that you felt the need to be in love and to be loved. Yeah. But for different reasons. Yeah. So so for you, you I know you gave your backstory, but for him, the fact that he went the extra mile all the time. Yeah. Right? You know, I I I can't imagine waking up and writing a note to say, Oh yeah, I've left you orange juice here and, and all of that, because it it's not something that I've had to do. Yeah. But for him, he felt he needed to do that to keep you close and yeah. to make sure that you you know you're taken care of. And sometimes we are a reflection of things that we lacked, mm, right? So, so yeah. for him, potentially, the fact that he was going the extra mile might, might, might just be the inner him saying, I never got this when I was young. Yeah. And so true. I would have been positioned to give it to someone so that they don't have to feel like I felt. Yeah. And I did. And I mean, we did things for each other. Like, I remember our first Christmas, I did this, like, advent calendar of, like, the 24 days leading up to Christmas. I had gifts for him every day. I tried to make it, like, because I knew he came from, like, kind of a fucked up family. But I love my family, mm -hmm. so I'm like, we'll just fold him into my family. And my family just, like, gave him tons of presents and did all this stuff. And I'm, like, really wanted him to feel, like, welcome and a part of it and all that. So I do think, like, I, I did try a lot. But, it, yeah, you're right. Like, everything you're saying I think is quite right. And, and it's interesting you're saying that because he – told me he loved me every single day, kissed me every single morning before he went to work. Like, and those kinds of things I loved and I wanted and I needed. And so it's, and then it's also just scary to think about, like if you go out on your own and you still don't have that self worth and you're going to go out and you're going to go, what I'm going to do this all over again and be single all over again, or maybe be alone forever or whatever. Like that's hard, right? To, to swallow yeah, yeah, that yeah. pill and yeah, to actually yeah. do that. But I just, I decided I need to do it. I, I started talking to my sister about it. I started just like, I was listening to podcasts about like breakups and all these things. And mm -hmm. I was just like, mm -hmm. you know, wanted to go, I should have broken up with him a year before I did is the honest yeah. truth. Yeah. 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 But I had all planned out and I basically was like, look, I'm going to break up with him on a Monday. He has Tuesday, Wednesday off. I'm going to break up with him on a Monday night. When he comes home from work, my bags will be packed. I'll go to my sister's house, stay there. We'll have our break. Wow. And he'll have two days off work to process so he doesn't have to go right back into work 
like miserable or whatever. And I had this whole, like it was set out. So when he came home and granted, he felt a bit, I think, ambushed because I had a whole plan laid out. Like my bags are packed. I was going to my sister's, all this stuff. But I think that's a bit how like, how uh, women are, right? We know we want to leave way before we want to leave. And like, and we just do it. And, uh, and we called it a break at the time, but I knew it was a breakup, but I just wanted to soften that blow. I'm like, have you heard the carrot celery thing? No, what's that? So that people in relationships, when they break up, they're either carrots or they're celery. So they're either carrot, clean break, clean snap, done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Celery is like you pull it apart and all the strings are still okay. And it's not pulling apart and there's still those residual. But when I am done, I'm done because I've already spent the last however long in my Processing head. Processing that, yeah. It's like when I quit a job, I'm ready to quit. Like I'm done. I want it done yesterday. Or if I want a tattoo, I, I want it and I will get it within the next 48 hours. Like when I want something, I decide it. And after I process, 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 when I make my decision, it's done. You know, I want to ask you how you really feel about that because coming from my end it feels yeah. very unfair on Shamisa's part yeah right because in his mind things are colorful or at least i hope they were colorful or maybe they weren't because he wasn't being intimate and he was initiating stuff so right. he might have been the same space but he just didn't have the balls to actually say it but you had the balls to to plan it yeah have it ready for execution, execute it, and then leave. Yeah. I I I just feel like that 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 was a bit harsh and hard on him. So for you at the moment yeah. and the day that you decided to leave and I'm gone, how bad did you feel on a scale of one to five? One being I felt nothing and five I felt terrible. Like 10. I was like, I was a blubbering mess. I was like, what did I do? I've ruined my life. I'm going to be miserable. And then all I could think of was all of the good things. All I could think of was everything he'd ever done for me. Every time I felt good and felt like, wow, okay. (laughs) Getting a little emotional. But like, you know, like it's, it is, it's hard. Because you just think of everything you're giving up. And to me, like a very real possibility that I would just be this fat, miserable, lonely woman for the rest of my life. And I gave up the only man who ever treated me with respect. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why is this so difficult for you now? Um, but what, but what is it that you're thinking right now? Because this overwhelming feeling yeah. literally just pounced on you. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and I know a lot of people when they come onto the podcast are ready to talk because they've dealt with stuff. So my question yeah. to you right now is, are you okay? Yes. Yeah, so I am, I am okay. Wow. That like, it did come out of kind of nowhere. Um, but I have been working on myself so much in the last, you know, few years. And especially this last year with COVID and everything, like I've been doing nothing but work on myself. And I think the reason I got really emotional is because I'm so far from that right now, but it makes me sad to think that I ever thought that about myself. That's, yeah. that's what I think it is. I think it just makes me sad that I've lived my life talking so poorly to myself. You know, like you have a kid. Could you imagine if you heard that for their whole life, they just told themselves they were garbage and they weren't worth oh, anything? Yeah. That, that, that would that'll be heart wrenching. Right. So it's like, yeah. it makes me sad just to think that like, that is how I talk to myself. And I will never do that again. And I think that moment just sort of drew this line in the sand for me where I just was like, I I don't want to be this person. And somehow I got enough in me. So it sort of, it seemed a little bit cold, but it wasn't without a million conversations before and fights Mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. Like it wasn't Mm -hmm. out of the blue and, you know, and it just wasn't. And he did try afterwards. So like he came to see me one night. He's like, I want to see you. And he's like, I miss you so much. And he was he was even wearing like all the clothes, like all these, his whole outfit he was wearing were the clothes I had bought him and all this stuff. And he was like trying, I know he was trying. And he's like, can we please go to like couples therapy or something? I also think he suffered from depression, which is why he'd like be in his pajamas for days and play video games and do those kinds of things. And it was just, it was so heavy. I was like, it was just too heavy. It was just too much. And uh, he wanted us to go to couples therapy to see if we could work it out. And we went there, but we basically like broke up in like a single session of couples therapy. And the therapist was like, look, like I really see, I really see that, you know, 
Lou Shimo is is out. She's out. Like, Chamisa, how do you feel? And he was just like, you know, it is what it is. And I said, and he's like, so why? The therapist was like, why did you come? And I was like, I came because we've talked about him going to therapy for like years. And I didn't think he would come without me. So I just wanted him to come to therapy. Wow. And so like, we basically like left it where he like paid for the therapist and like we broke up and I was like, what a bitch I am. Like he fucking just paid to have me break. He paid like $175 to have me break up with him in a therapist's office. Yo, that's yeah. deep. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm guessing you guys didn't talk again after that point. We saw each other one other time at a mutual friend's yeah. party. It was about yeah. maybe four or six months later. And mm. he was already in a full new relationship, just like he'd always done a full relationship, uh, which is now the woman he is married and has a kid with. Wow. And it's just funny because it's like, you know, and I have I don't have ill will towards him. And I think it's like it's almost sad that he also let it get down that line. Right. Because he obviously wanted a kid. And he wanted those things, but I didn't. And he was like, okay, that's cool. Like he was okay to go along with, and may, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's just going along with her. But like, I do think he's happy and he's found his person. And I hope that he is. But like, to me, I was just like, I was right. Like, look at this. Six months later, I'm still going, I need to work on myself. I need to do all the stuff. I need to take chances. I need to live my life, whatever. And he has yeah, already yeah, yeah. moved on in a new relationship and acting just like, here we go again. And I was like, yeah, I 100% made the right decision. I have never regretted a single day since we broke up. And everything I've done since has been about, like, pushing myself and challenging myself. And, like, I started therapy and really working on myself, as mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm. hear of, like, years of all this, yeah. like, self-hate. And, yeah, and yeah. you know, I heard this really great thing last year, actually. And this sort of kicked off a lot for me. And it said, you have to make a list of the qualities you want in a partner. And if you do not possess those qualities yourself, you do not have a right to ask for them in somebody else. Yo, that is that is super powerful. My right? goodness. Yeah. And I was like, well, I can't make myself become like a six foot four sexy man, but I can, you know. Exactly. Yeah. But you, you know, know I, I want someone ambitious and funny and smart and confident who will push me, but is generous and loyal and has friends and they're mentally and physically fit. And so I was like, I am going to stop dating. And now I'm just to solely focused on being like an amazing me so that when I meet someone who's going to be my match or someone who can push me, we are going to be this fucking power couple. Wow, this is freaking incredible. So that's when I think like I, I like it when you talk about how Lushimo means faith and hope. And I have yeah. so much of that now in myself because of the work I've done on myself. You have done really, really well. Thanks. You honestly, you've done exceptionally well to think about, you, you know, the backstory where you had such, you know, a huge amount of self hate. Yeah. Um, and, and how you looked at yourself and how you said, you know, anything that had a heartbeat, you, you, you pretty much had an opportunity to be with, etc. Yeah. And for you to then step back now and say, now there's a whole lot to me. Yeah. And I have a whole lot more to give the world. And you're being patient with yourself as well through that whole process. Yeah. This this is a real 360 for me. And it's a real reflection of what your name says, just like you, you mentioned that you got a whole lot more faith and hope in who yeah. you are as a person and, and, and what you want to be and what you want to become. Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm so excited about like the future and mm -hmm. and who my future partner will be, because I know I have such high standards for them of yeah, who I yeah. want and the type of person that I want. And I don't need someone who is like makes a ton of money or does all this. I need someone who has big goals and big dreams and is ready to put in that work to get there and do those cool things. I just want someone who I'm like super proud of to have on my arm. Mm. And then mm. I'm like, we can just like push each other together. So if this person is all about the gram and they want to have everything put on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and blah, 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 blah. Given the experience you've had and why you did that originally, would you yeah. be opposed to that or you'd be okay with it? What's your take on showing love publicly like that now? Since I think, I mean, that's a good question. I think showing it in, uh, showing it to be proud is one thing. If it's excessive, I think that's not okay. And I, and I know people have talked about how like people that are public, it's like there have been studies done that say there's a higher divorce rate amongst people who have bigger weddings, like more mm. extravagant, expensive weddings, right? Because it's about the show. It's not about the marriage. Yeah. And like yeah, yeah. social media is about the show and not about the relationship. So I think if it was done in a limited, like not hiding me, but not 
it's not so overt that it's always having to shove it down your throat. I want mm-hmm. my social media to be about me and my achievements and the things I've done and the things I'm working on and that kind of stuff when I use it. I don't want it to be, I don't need to prove anything to anyone. All I need mm-hmm. to prove is to myself that I'm with somebody that I'm proud of. And I'd be much happier if they took me to a party or out to dinner with them and their friends and showed me off to their people rather, or had me to their home for dinner or introduced me to their family than showed me all off on social media. I think if someone is intent on posting all over social media and being like all about that life, yeah, there's there's something there that's because it's fake, right? It's not real. And now I I can I get that and I have perspective on it, but it, it isn't mm-hmm. real. And I think I don't think I'd be with somebody who who's all about that. So if this guy meets all of the qualities you've mentioned, you know, he's driven, he's hardworking, he's not a yes man, he's literally everything you ask for, but his only problem is that he likes to be extravagant with the relationship on Facebook and blah, 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 you'd still say no? No, no. But I do think that if somebody is insistent that they must be over the top, that Mm -hmm. likely would not be their only issue, right? Because their issues are that they're wanting external validation, their yep. issues are all of these things. We all want external validation to a certain extent. Yep. But no, no. If somebody was like this amazing person and they live, say, even if they lived more of a public life or they were whatever, and they were an entertainer or something like that, and they posted stuff on. No, like I'm I'm not totally against that stuff because I, I'm not. But it's uh, I think as long as they have their head on their shoulders like do they understand that not all social media is real do they have some perspective of it you know what i mean like as long as they have that and then they're not living and dying by their phone and going like you're missing out on moments because you're too too busy trying to get the fucking right filter on and all that shit that's not what i want okay yeah now, that makes a lot of sense. Jeez, man, this has been a good session. Honestly, <sighs> I've, 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 Therapy I've, 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 en- yeah, now I've enjoyed that. And for those who are listening to um, this episode, two key lessons came out from Lushamo and Chamisa's story. I still can't get over that Chamisa thing and how you, <laughs> <laughs> and now you brought it through. And it all makes sense because this guy, you know, kind of gave you hope that this is going to be great. Yeah. You know, all of the good stuff he was doing. But then when it came to the real things of substance, he just didn't come through. He didn't come through. You know? So, yeah, two key lessons came out. First up, one, trust your gut. This couldn't have been more real. You know, from from the time that Lucio was looking on, plen- uh, on plenty of fish, she could tell that, nah, this is not the guy that I wanted to be with. And her gut was telling her the same thing. So, number one, trust your gut. And second... Love yourself first. And I think this is what this episode really is about. Mm -hmm. You know, loving yourself, having that confidence in who you are as an individual and not requiring that external validation for things that you do emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially, in whatever alley you can think of. Yeah. Um, And what would be your last words to anybody listening to this then? How would you close this out? Um, Yeah, you just gotta, I think, work on yourself and really know who Mm. you are. Be really true to yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and just know know that you deserve as much as you want to deserve. You know, like no, you do deserve that. You you do deserve that love and the, everything. And and in life is just too fucking short, man. That, that's it. Life is too short to be unhappy. Absolutely. You've been listening to another episode of the Feeling Station. I'm your host Tinto, and I'll catch you on next weekend's episode. Peace. Oh. Tell me what you're feeling. Sachi's on Daru Raini and Chaki's on Tell me what you're feeling Now that it's over Sachi's on Daru Raini and Chaki's on Let me talk about my feelings Let me talk about my feelings Yeah Kuru doi moto oru no to kujitiru amai Kujitiru amai Love is a fire Kuru doi moto oru no to kujitiru amai